Welcome back to the Magma Developers Conference. We trust that your break was productive. Next up, we have Augustine Phillips and Alakik Abhishek from ARM to talk to us about porting Magma to the ARM ecosystem. Augustine is a segment marketing director responsible for edge compute strategy and go-to-market for ARM's infrastructure line of business. He is a keen observer of the decision-making process and proponent of disruptive open source projects. Joining Augustine is Alakik Abhishek, principal engineer responsible for solutions in career, carrier and networking domain from ARM's infrastructure line of business. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, so in this uh, session, uh, you know, we uh, will go through uh, quickly some of the uh, overview uh, of how ARM is uh, part of uh, the Magma project. And we are extremely excited uh, and honored uh, to be part of the uh, co-founding team for um, the Magma project under the Linux Foundation. Um, so at, at the start, right, we will uh, talk a bit about uh, you know, how ARM is involved. You know, ARM is a slightly different company, right? You would know ARM is a, uh, essentially a technology provider and ecosystem company. Uh, and then we'll talk through uh, how our uh, engagements would uh, look like. Um, and uh, from there, we will move on uh, to our current efforts uh, on enabling Magma on the ARM architecture. I will talk about the status and some of the planned next steps. And uh, in conclusion, we'll talk about some of the recommendations. So as we see the ecosystem uh, picking up more and more ARM-based uh, devices, there are some things that uh, we would recommend, uh, you know, the uh, customers to look out for uh, as we uh, think through designing these systems. Okay. <clears throat> so here uh, as ARM, right, uh, we have a pretty broad view uh, of the edge computing space. Uh, ARM has technology that spans uh, sensors, uh, actuators, all the way from IoT endpoints uh, through to various different uh, uh, aggregation points along the compute spectrum uh, into the uh, core data center. Now, uh, if uh, we look at uh, some of the traditional uh, uh, areas where ARM footprint has already been, all the way from uh, 2G now into 5G. If you look at the RAN uh, side of the uh, infrastructure, uh, multiple generations have been uh, uh, supported by uh, compute uh, footprint that is based on the ARM architecture. Now, as we see uh, core network technologies now becoming more and more distributed and open and becoming edge ready, you know, that's where some of the uh, best practices uh, that span these different uh, edge compute zones uh, sort of come into picture. As ARM, we are pretty confident that the broad ecosystem uh, uh, that is out there uh, has the right sized uh, compute uh, in terms of silicon and software and accelerator and power and performance and cost uh, that the ARM ecosystem can provide. So the question then becomes how, um, you know, as we see more and more uh, cloud native workloads uh, uh, coming into the edge, how can we make the experience of working uh, with all these different uh, heterogeneous hardware uh, as seamless as possible? So in here, if you look at the various um, uh, aggregation points, right, we see uh, instead of us adding into the definition of edge, uh, we instead uh, try to understand as best as possible our partners' views of the edge. So if it's a hyperscale cloud uh, view of the edge or a telco view of the edge, which uh, is increasingly having <clears throat> a lot in common. We look at enterprise networking players, view of the edge, you know, what some of the uh, companies there are doing behind uh, uh, through initiatives like intent-based networks. We try to understand what's going on in the industrial and industry 4.0 platforms where we see more and more workload optimized, somewhat hardware aware type designs, increasingly being asked to host more uh, rich workloads. Um, so through this evolution, uh, we see there is this diverse, uh, the need for diverse and optimized hardware at the edge. Uh, but then, you know, it doesn't lend itself very well uh, to that, uh, you know, almost like a cookie cutter scale solution uh, that has made cloud computing uh, very successful. So how do you merge uh, these languages of uh, uh, cloud native experiences and uh, diverse hardware 
uh, and then quickly get to uh, where you need to, which is uh, the application uh, layer software. So that's one of the key uh, uh, priorities for uh, the ARM ecosystem uh, at the infrastructure and the IoT edge. So if we look at this landscape, um, broadly speaking, right, we are able to come up with a generic architecture of a cloud native edge device. And these are, you know, of course, network connected. Uh, they are remotely managed and they need to be upgradable all the way from firmware uh, on up. And increasingly, uh, whether it is far edge or near edge, uh, they're running more and more general purpose uh, operating systems. Um, and it's virtualized or it's capable of being virtualized in some manner, whether it is VM based or containers based. Um, and earlier uh, uh, features like hardware based root of, roots of trust were uh, nice to have, but now with features like uh, multi-tenancy uh, or identity provisioning, uh, being able to host diverse workloads on the same uh, platforms at the edge, having a hardware-based root of trust in all these um, uh, devices, you know, in, in Magma's case, for instance, on the different classes of access gateways is becoming essential, almost uh, table stakes. Now, increasingly these functions that these devices are hosting uh, are becoming software defined, right? Um, so, uh, given that, right, so that's why we created initiatives uh, uh, called uh, uh, Project Cassini, which is essentially an open, uh, a completely open initiative uh, backed with uh, open source uh, reference uh, code uh, to drive, uh, you know, standards based uh, design approaches and experiences for all manners of platforms uh, at the edge. So uh, Project Cassini operates across uh, three vectors, uh, where it uh, promote standards-based approach for platform design. Uh, similarly, for security, uh, you know, we have initiatives and certification programs across these vectors that, you know, when we um, talk to ODMs or OEMs who build their own boxes, or when we talk to system integrators responding to uh, RFIs and RFQs, uh, things to look out for uh, that can save significant amount of design time, uh, support time, uh, custom engineering burden uh, if uh, you know some of these best practices are are followed so we work very closely with uh, all of our silicon partners uh, we remain completely neutral uh, across all our partner base and uh, with our odms and the oems to ensure that the platforms that they roll out uh, for the edge uh, are built on uh, best practices uh, we won't have time to go into the details of all of these vectors uh, in in this session today but in the next, uh, in this one slide here, you know, how are we envisioning uh, these kind of behaviors uh, to affect uh, end uh, stacks like uh, Magma, cloud native stacks on the edge, uh, such as Magma? So, uh, for instance, uh, imagine uh, you're responding to, uh, you're a system integrator uh, responding to an RFI, um, and you have a host of uh, hardware that you need to pick and choose from. At the edge, you know, one of the key elements is uh, the security concerns for these devices. So, uh, and you will see uh, different kinds of uh, um, security implementations um, come to a head at the edge. So you might be uh, responding to an IT uh, department's RFQ, which uh, mandates TPM uh, based accesses. You might be looking at uh, somebody more from the OT side uh, which might have a trust zone or a secure element based uh, uh, requirement. So you see all of these different security implementations coming to a head. Um, and then uh, that's where initiatives like uh, PSA certified uh, come into picture. So if you have a, a PSA certification um, on these platforms, uh, what that does is it builds assurance downstream uh, into the ecosystem that the platform that you are picking uh, for your access gateway or for your orchestrator or for your uh, RAN processing uh, uh, needs. Uh, you know, it, is, it has implementations at a hardware level uh, for these different routes of trust that uh, conform to various industry standards and uh, widely accepted uh, standards for that matter. Um, and then uh, if you have a certain operating system uh, or uh, stack needs that needs to be 
uh, hosted on these uh, classes of devices. So typically, right, there are uh, corporate engagements or uh, agreements to use a certain uh, enterprise grade of operating system or hypervisor, or in some other cases, commercial or even do-it-yourself versions of, uh, say, Yocto-based uh, embedded Linux distributions. A lot of these requirements uh, come into play and you have all these diverse classes of systems. So that's where uh, you see initiatives like uh, uh, the ARM system ready certification program uh, come in handy. So the idea is if um, these SOCs uh, that host these stacks, if these boards uh, that host these SOCs are system ready certified, there's a very uh, high uh, guarantee uh, that the OS uh, stack just uh, boots securely uh, with minimal to no custom engineering effort, and you can pick and choose, and you can easily respond uh, to uh, to whichever uh, uh, stack that needs to be uh, supported on on these different uh, classes of gateways uh, at the edge. Now, imagine you have uh, securely booted uh, your operating system on these gateways. So from then on, uh, you are quickly into um, you know hosting a cloud native uh, type stack. Here we highlight Magma, uh, the access gateway piece, of course. But the idea is imagine, um, you know, if you look at the various different ARM-based implementations, a lot of different SOCs with different, you know, uh, network packet processing, crypto processing, storage processing, accelerators all are bundled together in the same uh, SOC providing uh, you know, significant value in terms of overall performance uh, per watt. And in some many cases, performance per watt per dollar. So you want the applications to remain uh, you know, uh, to maintain its uh, right wants, run anywhere uh, uh, nature. But at the same time, these applications uh, need to uh, be able to access uh, the best in class features, uh, you know, best in class security features, for instance, that that particular platform has to offer. So without having to instrument your application. So that's where uh, initiatives and open source uh, projects like Parsec uh, come into, uh, into picture. So Parsec is uh, now part of the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, increasingly finding adoption in uh, some of the key um, uh, uh, standard OS distros. The idea behind Parsec is if you have uh, end uh, applications, you can just link to the Parsec uh, uh, user space library, and then it'll abstract out the ac uh, access to you know, downstream on that platform, if you have a TPM or a secure element or some other kind of hardware based road of trust, and you don't have to worry about the nitty gritties of, uh, you know, the hardware implementation details on a per platform basis. So overall, right, you can think of uh, Project Cassini as an initiative that um, gives um, this toolkit that we would actively uh, recommend uh, and promote the ecosystem uh, to, uh, to look for uh, and reach out to ARM uh, to understand how to uh, enable uh, these kind of platforms. So the idea is, uh, you know, once you design uh, Project Cassini-based uh, 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 platforms, you can easily migrate uh, your software stacks between different grades uh, of systems that are uh, deployed at different uh, aggregation points along the edge. So if it's a uh, you know, two core, four core system, fanless system, low cost system sitting uh, at a cell site to, uh, you know, multiple RU, uh, you know, edge server designs, uh, that workload uh, can migrate, um, you know, if you have uh, platforms that are underpinned by some of these, uh, uh, you know, recommended design principles. So uh, we wanted to mention that, and uh, this, as, as um, um, uh, begins to, uh, collaborate closely with the uh, Magma team. Uh, and during the course of this uh, year, we will uh, you will see a lot more of these uh, Project Cassini type platforms uh, that are broadly available for the ecosystem to choose from and to select from and to design in uh, based on your needs, uh, you know, uh, for, for Magma performance requirements. Um, with that, I will hand it over to uh, Alaukik, uh, who will talk a bit about uh, our current efforts on the Magma code base uh, on the ARM architecture. Uh, thanks, Nipu. Um, my name is Lokik. I am an engineer here at ARM. Um, so the short, um, so rather an uninteresting sort of summary would be that, you know, all the Magma services are coming up on ARM and uh, keep an eye on um, you know, the main line while we work together with the gatekeepers to upstream it, 
you know, and uh, so that you can play with the code on ARM architectures of your choice. Uh, rather longer and a more interesting variant <laughs> would be, um, you know, a little bit of history uh, on why why this area is of interest uh, to ARM, why it is important to uh, be uh, doing work in this area. So this, this uh, uh, effort of ours started as part of uh, a research project where we were looking at uh, um, technologies where ARM's USP, which is you know, um, cost, uh, efficiency, power per watt, uh, can be made to realize at its maximum potential. And, uh, you know, private LTE, small cell deployments, uh, edge, all these are pretty conducive to ARM's U USP. So we started looking at this space and uh, our idea was to sort of uh, string together all different pieces in this area and demonstrate uh, what can be done on ARM and efficiently done on ARM. So uh, initially we started off, we took a OAI based implementation of EPC, uh, their uh, eNodeB infrastructure, and we strung together a, a rather end-to-end -end edge system to run a machine learning object detection workload, uh, fully functional, demonstrable, um, you know, including the management and orchestration of application pieces and everything. So, um, so we started off with OAI EPC. Uh, there are a couple of cool pieces uh, in OAI uh, that, uh, that are of interest. I mean, the CUPS, uh, the disaggregation of user and control plane. Uh, although we would have loved to have multi SP gateway use support for really uh, demonstrating uh, breakouts at different places, but uh, uh, you know, um, I think the community was working towards that. Uh, so we simulated sort of a edge scenario with a breakaway um, SP gateway U from the from the EPC. Uh, in this case, uh, the EPC was running on a solid run ARM based uh, LX2160 uh, uh, hardware, and we had another. Uh, sim, same uh, platform running the SP Gateway U. Uh, this whole system is uh, uh, connected to uh, USRP based SDR. We had a ZT dongle with SIM card uh, uh, capturing videos from uh, a UE perspective, uh, making a full connect uh, on ARM platform, uh, sending the video all the way up to the edge, and the edge then. Uh, uh, in this case, we had implemented uh, two kinds of edges. One is a, a more AWS Graviton ARM um, instance-based uh, far edge that we call, um, or a data center edge. And we also had, uh, which is not shown in the picture, is is about like a, a, a near edge, which is a smaller platform, um, uh, which was again, we reused the uh, the LX2160 device. The idea was that uh, can we um, run this ML workload using the OAI EPC running on ARM, using the edge gateways running on ARM and demonstrate our ML uh, flow. And uh, uh, I mean, and uh, we were able to demo it. We have a POC working. So in while doing so, I think uh, what we have done is um, uh, we started talking to Magma team about you know uh, graduating to a more production-like environment, and we already know from today's announcement that you know this whole OAI and multiple efforts are uh, getting subsumed under Magma. So that is the sort of the the future or the next step uh, to go. So in, in this process, we started uh, you know, working with the Magma team to bring the whole Magma AGW on the same device. And uh, uh, that is where our effort with Magma started. Um, Nebu, next slide. Thanks. Um, so where we are at the moment, uh, so uh, um, again, uh, you know, I, I think the developers will appreciate this. Uh, there were initially a lot of uh, 
complexity in, um, in getting this to work on ARM. Um, not really because of the support, it's because uh, initial versions of, uh, uh, of the AJW is Debian supported. We had issues for Debian support on some of the platforms of choice. Um, we were implementing that on uh, Ubuntu-based platforms, so you know, migrating those all to Ubuntu and uh, and trying it out. Um, you know, Praveen, I from the Facebook team, has uh, uh, I've given him a lot of grief during this process, uh, but uh, he has been extremely patient and helpful. Uh, but uh, uh, so so we started off, uh, you know, uh, delving in that uh, we uh, with with the Facebook team and the Magma team's help, uh, Shadi's and Amur's, uh, we have been able to uh, get the Ubuntu version and um, lately even the Debian version working on the LX uh, uh, 20, I always mess up that name, um, uh, on the Honeycomb uh, uh, working. So we have all, uh, I mean, we have the services running up up and running on the AWS uh, T4G uh, um, instance. Uh, the services are coming up. We are in the process of uh, uh, doing integration testing. And again, as you can understand, the, the basic uh, Magma-based integration services are, are somewhat linked to, uh, you know, uh, in a Vagrant environment, and we are still working through that support. So. So we are in the process of actually testing and interrupting with, uh, uh, again, the OAI EAPC and USRP uh, um, uh, based SDR for, for real connectivity. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be uh, sharing some good news in shortly after our testing. And uh, uh, we have also, uh, so that is the AWS end of the spectrum. We've also, uh, got the services up and running on the on the uh, honeycomb devices so uh, we will be uh, going through the process of uh, uh, validating that and we'll be working with the uh, magma and facebook teams to uh, see how we can upstream it we can add them in this into the ci cd pipeline it may take a little bit of uh, i don't know it may be a little bit of surgery there but uh, let's uh, let's hope that uh, we could get it soon sooner to the community um, or as soon as possible. Uh, next step, I think, as I mentioned, is the mainline support. Um, and uh, you will also see uh, there is some effort uh, that Nebu and uh, the Magma team is uh, working towards enabling different classes of platform as a reference board for the community to choose from. ARM-based, uh, so that you have more choice uh, with respect to your scale and need. Um, so that that would be a keep an eye on for that. A uh, few of my um, pitfalls that I would like to sort of share with the community here is, I think one of them is uh, that we should think about you know how to uh, bring all the modules and packages you know to the latest version and uh, uh, there, some of them are a bit frozen in time. Some of them have been specifically built and hosted in separate repos. It gives a little bit of grief when you are trying to do a multi-arc support. Um, we would also have to sort of relook into the test harness, you know, a little bit. Maybe you know, work with the team there to see how we could enable if there is no vagrant base uh, or if that is delayed. And uh, uh, of course, I mean, if uh, more and more open source, uh, you know, uh, open community supported packages as opposed to specifically built ones. I think uh, that would really help in accelerating any uh, new architecture or, or having multi-arc support in Magma. So, um, you know, as a developer, I, I felt that, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, there's definitely a need to revisit that area or, or you know, at least think about it, uh, my two cent. And again, I really want to sort of thank Praveen, Shadi, Amar for their help in, and their patience, of course, uh, you know, for answering my dumb questions, uh, specifically Praveen, who has been <laughs> working with the Ubuntu support and he gave a lot of pointers. So um, at the end, I mean, the summary, uh, look out for, 
for the mainline release for ARM support, and hopefully it'll be sooner than later. Uh, Nebul, you want to conclude? Um, uh, actually, uh, yeah. So uh, some screenshot uh, just to demonstrate that uh, you know things are working, services are coming up on the ARM instances. So I believe we'll be sharing this slide so you can have a look. And uh, if you have more questions, reach out to me and we can work uh, um, on the community forum. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Laukik. So, um, you know, final slide for us. So we want to, uh, you know, uh, raise awareness of some of the initiatives uh, that ARM has been uh, up to uh, in the edge computing space. Um, so we broadly call it uh, Project Cassini, but as you uh, as you heard, you know, it's essentially a toolkit uh, that uh, promotes uh, best practices all the way from having the latest uh, standards-based uh, firmware, whether it is uh, embedded firmware or BIOS-grade uh, firmware. As we see more and more enterprise-grade workloads or cloud-native workloads migrate over to the edge, you have this broad ecosystem and range of uh, platforms that uh, has the right size compute for you. Uh, so the, I mean, if you use these tools, that means that you can easily work with these systems and you can migrate your workloads to various uh, deployment zones uh, across the edge. Um, so for ARM, uh, you know, Project Cassini is that tool. Uh, it's, a, it's an open initiative. Um, you know, please reach out to us uh, on any questions. We are there in the uh, Magma uh, uh, Slack channels. Uh, reach out to us directly. We're happy to help. Uh, we are always actively seeking for uh, multi-party POCs to demonstrate uh, joint uh, value in these uh, use cases. And we are super excited uh, to be part of uh, you know, the Linux Foundation effort. Um, and we are all about ecosystems and you, you can count on us to uh, help you uh, as you uh, decide on the right uh, kind of platforms uh, to get the best out of uh, Magma for your deployments. So with that, uh, we'll end this session. Uh, thank you everyone for your time. Um, and back to you, Phil. Thank you. Hey, Bu, Alec, thank you so very much for sharing. Uh, it's really great that we're getting work done on making sure we have an excellent implementation on the ARM platform. And there's a lot of uh, embedded applications and uh, co-applications with the open RAN project. Uh, that this opens up as a, as a very broad door. So thank you. Uh, we are back on time and we probably have time for one, maybe two questions from the bridge. Uh, if there's anything anyone has uh, burning on their heart, uh, please feel free to unmute and... and... Vincent? Um, I can uh, read through. There are some questions on the chat. So uh, um, we are master based, uh, latest from the master branch. Uh, we have been developing there. Um, OAI RAN support, um, good question. Uh, six months ago, I had looked into that uh, briefly. But uh, for strategic reasons, we had not implemented it. I mean, we focused on EPC rather than RAN, but uh, uh, you know, we can discuss, Louis, we can discuss about that. It's, it was, uh, I mean, as I said, uh, it was an interesting area to delve into. Um, uh, we would need some support. Uh, um, I tried that briefly and then I just left it. Um, so yeah, uh, do reach out to me. Uh, you know, if you want, uh, um, if we want, if we can collaborate on that, it would be great. Um, any? Yeah, question here. Sure. Uh, Prakash here. Uh, my question to you is, OA, you have a fork, which is what Magma was. So which one are we talking about here, OA or Magma? No, we, uh, um, the, the work. So our initial work was on OAI EPC based, right? So, uh, but for the purposes of this call, I think uh, we are on Magma's master branch for, for our porting work on ARM. So, so we have already uh, uh, made OAI um, work on ARM. That was a couple of months ago. We, have, we are making the Magma master branch uh, working on ARM now. Thank you. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time. And with 
as with the other presentations, we'll take the remaining questions off the bridge and uh, get back to you with answers from our speaker.